All right, this is Conrad coming to you from Warsaw, Poland, one, two, three steps east. And what a week it was. Ebola, a real blood moon, uh, Islamophobia, creatures from the deep, all of these scary things. And uh, we're going to get into these things, actually. But first, what I want to talk to you about is curb painting. You say curb painting. What the hell is curb painting? Curb painting, my friend. Curb painting, my friend, that was, I thought that was going to save me. And I want to step back in time to put all these other things that happened this week in perspective. Uh, let's, let's go back to the year 1990 or so. There was a recession that nobody even thought about, and, and I couldn't find a job, and uh, lots of people couldn't find a job. And uh, it was one of these things, you know, you kind of couch surfing, sort of between couch surfing and living at your mom, but you don't want to admit that, so you say you're couch surfing. And I decided to paint curbs to make money. Now, curb painting is this, for Europeans who often have no curbs, uh, in the suburbs in the States, you have these kind of front yards and you have curbs. And the curb serves uh, 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 as just something to stumble over when you come home tipsy at night. I'm not really sure. Uh, a gutter, to, so you can race little boats when you're kids. At any rate, it does have one purpose. Uh, in the States, what they do is they paint a little square white, and then they put the numbers on it, and that's where you have your address. And so what I thought, I know what I'll do. I, I was obviously desperate. Um, I will get a, a piece of cardboard and kind of a square like this, cut it out, and then I'll go get some stencils, and I will walk around, walk around the neighborhood, not my neighborhood, because I didn't want anyone to know it was me, but I would drive somewhere and walk around their neighborhood, and knock on doors and say, hey, listen, I can repaint the number on, on, your, on your house, on your curb, right? Because the city was supposed to do it, and they didn't really do it. So that's what I did. And, and I got in a car, and I, and I had my paint, and I had my, my stencils in my little square, and I drove uh, out to a neighborhood somewhere far, far away, and um, I knocked on some doors. And the first day, believe it or not, I mean, I painted five curbs in like three hours. I made $25. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to be rich. But the next day, the next day was kind of like today, only it wasn't because it was like 100 or 200 degrees because it was in Texas. And I was going up hills and I was going down hills and I was knocking on doors and nobody was home. I mean, I went to one door, I went to another door and on top of that, somebody like called the cops. So I had to like run between the houses like a little kid and go on to another street. And then, and then, you know, finally though, I knocked on a door and the door opened and it was this, this old man, this old man came to the door. <laughs> And I didn't really understand. I said, uh, hey, you know, would you like me to paint your curb? And he said, what? Paint, paint the curb? I said, yeah, look, I mean, I got, see, I got, I got this square. I'm going to take my spray pen. I'm going to spray on it. And then I've got my stencils. I'm going to spray a number. Well, I mean, they didn't look like that. This is, you know, I just didn't have any stencils. But, uh, but I had a stencil then. It's like a number. This is like the stencil that the guy at the end of the street sold, you know, like the uh, LSD drug dealer guy, right? And, um, but anyway. So he said, what? So you're going to, but, but I said, yeah, you'll have fresh numbers, man. And he said, oh, oh man, then people will come see me again. Nobody's come to see me in like two months. It must be because I don't have a number. And I was like, oh, dude. And I mean, even though I didn't have any money, I didn't have a good job. I said, hey, man, you know what? I'll paint your house for free. I'll pay you. Really? You'll pay it for free? Yeah, I'll paint your house for free. And, and, and so I'll go down. And he said, well, can I watch you? Well, I guess so. It was kind of like painting under pressure, but okay. So he, he goes down, he goes all the way down in the street, and, and I get my, I, I tape the square up, and I get the white spray paint out, and I spray paint on the square, and so it's not, now there's just a white square. I had to get rid of the old numbers. There's a white square. And he's going, but I don't have any numbers, man. I don't, I, I don't have any numbers. Nobody's going to, don't worry, don't worry. I'm going to put up the, the numbers. I'm going to use the stencil. So I got the black spray paint, and I don't know what happened, but I ran out of paint. I had no more paint. And uh, he was like, what? It's just a white square. I, I no longer exist. I no longer exist. And no, hey, calm down, man. Just calm down. And, and, and see how realistic it is? You can hear the cars coming. Just calm down, man. Just calm down. And, and I'll go get some black spray paint. I no longer exist. No one's going to come see me now. No, look. Look, just calm down. So I, I, I tell you, just wait here. I'll go buy some new spray paint. And then I'll come back and I'll spray you the numbers. And so, man, I, I, I get in my car and I'm driving real fast. 
And, and you know, because I got to save this guy because, like, he just got like a white square. I mean, he, uh, he's this guy is stressed, and and and, and I know right now you're wondering, you might like Conrad. How do you get into these messes, man? I mean, you know, but you got to understand, this is like 1990. This is the years. These are the years that inspired Fight Club. Except we didn't have Fight Club. We didn't have like cool Brad Pitt alter egos. We had like crap jobs and like uh, frisbee golf. Frisbee golf, man. The thing about frisbee golf is that if anyone sees you play frisbee golf, you're unemployed. And if you do get seen playing frisbee golf, you will remain unemployed. It's a little bit like, you know, rollerblading, because, you know, like the hardest thing about rollerblading, if I can quote Dave from Prague, is uh, admitting to your parents that you're gay. But no, but the point is we didn't have Helena Bonham Carter. Oh, that's not Helena Bonham Carter. Actually, that is Helena Bonham Carter, just not the right... Helena Bonham Carter. Uh, I'll even put up the link so you can see. That's the funny thing about the internet. You know, you, you, you go to one picture and then you, you, some of these things are hard to find in the public domain, so then you go to another picture. Like I, I went and I found this Helena. Helena of Troy. Um, don't kind of, <laughs> doesn't that make you wonder? You know, <laughs> you know, a face to sink a thousand chips. Is that what it was about? You know, these Renaissance painters, um, either they, uh, had another, really, they had another idea of what beauty is, or they just weren't really that good. I'm not sure. And you know, and then, after you see Helena of Troy, at least that version of Helena of Troy, then you just have to go somewhere else, and you... And then you get to Zsa Zsa Gabor, circa 1959. Hubba, hubba. I mean, what can you say about that? Except that, let's get back on the subject, which means bring us back to... Ah, there she is, Helena Bonham Carter. I mean, if you were like me and you grew up in a certain period of time, you had like Helena Bonham Carter, you had like Cindy Crawford, then you had Pamela Anderson. She was like a TV dinner. I mean, but let's get back to the story, although we understand each other, don't we? Let's get back to the story, uh, to the old man, because for a minute I went blank. To the old man, you got a white square, he doesn't have a number, we gotta, we gotta save the guy, right? There's no time to lose. So I go in the store, and I get the black paint, right? And I'm good. Oh, the top came up. Okay, I admit it, it's, it's, it's deodorant. It's a prop, man, it's a prop. But I get the black paint, the real black paint. I get in my car, and I'm driving back as fast as I can. I'm getting kind of worried because it's starting to get dark. And I go to that neighborhood, and I go up the hills, I go down the hills, I see, I see over here, I remember that part, that sign, that sign and where I cut through, through the houses, and, and, and God so help me. <laughs> I couldn't find the address. I don't know what happened, man. I mean, I looked all over the place. I drove around. I saw where I cut between those houses because of the cops. I saw where I cut between those houses because of the cops. And man, what, look at what I had done. I had removed this. I had erased this man's existence. I mean, you know, and sometimes, sometimes people ask me, say, Conrad, so why did you emigrate to Poland? And, and, you know, it wasn't just about, you know, curb painting. I didn't want to be relegated to curb painting or a crap job that didn't pan out for the rest of my life. But look, I had damaged this old man. I had removed his existence from the universe. And let me tell you, sometimes I think about that. And uh, I've suffered, my friend. I have suffered. Which brings me to our point, our real point, the real reason why we are all watching this program or participating in this program, because I guess I'll, I'll watch it and click it a bunch of times too, I admit, uh, which is Ebola, Creatures from the Deep, Islamophobia, and everything in between. But we'll have to get to that in the next part because I still have a really crap video editing program. I've got to do something about that. But anyway, I'll see you in a minute.